Well, hello. If you're watching this video, it means that you are interested in learning about our new choreographer tool for Audio Trip. So I'm Ashley Cooper. I'm one of the two devs at Kinemotic Studios creating Audio Trip. And until now, at least, this making of this video, I am the only one that has been choreographing all of the songs that you're currently playing in the game. But that's where you come in because we have now made a tool for you to make your own custom choreography. So I'm going to quickly, as quickly as possible, try to show you everything about it and give you some tips that I've been using and uh, see where you go from there. So at the top, you'll see there's now a third button, custom. So this will take you to all of the songs currently in the game, just like Quick Trip and Full Trip. And pick any one of them. So I'm going to start with Drift. And this is what you'll see. So we've included all of the levels that we've already made. You'll see Kinemotic Studios underneath them. And we've included an option for you to click this button, which will edit this by making a copy of it. So you can't actually edit the levels that are in the game, but you can start with that so that you can kind of create your own swing on it. Or you can create new, which starts completely from scratch and for any song that you actually choose. So we're going to start with regular. Oh, and by the way, this is actually where you'll come back, click any of these buttons, and you'll just go right into that choreography and play it just like normal. Okay, let's start with regular. We're going to make a copy of that. So launch the button and here we go. Ta-da! Here's our new choreographer scene. There are a few things to note here. First of all, this is your main editing console that'll start on, you know, up ready to use. In the sky, we have everything that's currently selected. So if you ever forget what you have selected while you're doing this, just look up in the sky. You're in the song Drift, by the way. The Artist's name is right underneath that, Raphael Frost. And then you have your selections of what you've chosen for basically your hands to do. So on the left hand, I currently have Gem selected, and right hand is the same. Those are default options, and I'll show you how to change that in a second. You're in Edit Mode. That's the little circle with the two gems there. And then underneath that, it shows you, again, default selections to start. shows 100% speed one or whole beat divisions, and you're starting at timestamp zero at the very beginning. If you didn't know, we're in the game audio trip, and this is the choreographer scene. So that's the sky. And what are these things? These are the beat divisions. They're only showing whole beats, and they will only ever show whole beats, but it's just for reference as you fly through the song. And it starts at zero and goes on. Okay. So here's your control panel. If you have no idea where to start and you got tired of watching this video by now, just click tooltips, toggle it on, and you'll see as you start to hover over anything, it shows you what it is. Awesome. It'll also show you the tooltips for each controller when you get into the main game, which I'll show you in a second. So now that that's on, I'll lead you through, uh, I'll walk you through a bit of this. So here's your speed. Again, 100% is by default. I usually start at 100% so I can sort of draft out uh, you know, moves that I naturally would do at the 100% timing of the song to see how it feels, and then go back later and slow it down, finesse it, clean it, and um, I'll show you how to do that also. But you can start at whatever speed you want by just pushing down on this little slider, and it slides in 5% increments, little notches. Okay, so we'll start at 100. One, uh, one other slider that we have here is scrubbing in the song. So if you don't want to start at zero and you're just editing a song, you know exactly where you want to go, click this little slider, go to any point in the song, and it'll take you there. Note that this isn't going to update until you actually push resume and get into the, the song playing. So I'm gonna push that back to zero. And then these are beat divisions. So by default, it's on whole beats, like I said. And typically I use 
most of the time, whole beats, half beats, and quarter beats. Um, eighth and sixteenth are useful for sure, but it's when you really just want to throw down a ton of game objects and it gets really gritty and really chaotic really fast, but go for it. And third, I haven't actually used yet, just because I haven't choreographed a song in third beat divisions, but that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, I'll start with one for now. And then I'm going to show you the game objects. So we have these on either side. These are your right hand. These are your left hand. They don't have to be the same thing. So at any given time, you could be creating, let's say, a dirgem on this side and a ribbon on this side. Just know that at any given time, you can only have one game object on any certain beat because uh, for the most part, humans only have one right hand and one left hand. Um, so just know that. So I'm going to switch these back to gems. And then I'll go through these in a second. But these selections here are a few more editing tools that we have. These are guides, barriers, and the eraser. And when you select any of these, you'll see that switches to guide selection. And it deselects any of the other game objects. And then the sky, it shows that both hands are currently editing a guide. The guides, the barriers, and the erasers all do this. And if you want to switch back to your last selection, you just click the button, goes back. OK. Um, the last buttons on this control panel to show you are exit, if you just want to go back to the hub world. Save. I'll show you how to do that. And then this resumes. Um, two more main buttons up here for different menus are copy and paste. And I'll show you those after we have some fun editing. So let's resume. OK, so now we're flying through the song. The beginning is kind of quiet, so you won't hear it yet. But I'm going to go ahead. Oh, gems are coming up. I'm going to pause it. OK, so you'll note a few things. My cursors are now showing up on my right and left hands. What this is doing is projecting to the next beat division that I have selected. So I have whole beats selected. Again, look at the sky if you want to remember. And so it's projecting to the next whole beat. And it'll change depending on beat division. On the cursor, since I have tooltips selected, it's showing me my controller tooltips. If you want to turn these off, all you have to do is open up the menu again and toggle off tooltips, but probably helpful for you starting out. And they will vary per controller, so just note whichever controller you're using. Right now, I'm using Knuckles or Index controllers, um, so that's what it's showing. So anyway, I paused by clicking the joystick. And there are a few other things on here, so if I want to go back to the menu, typically, oh, accidentally closed the joystick. If you want to go back to the menu, you can click B. So I'll take you back. Like I said, you can toggle this off, toggle it back on. And you can click B again, or you can click the Resume button. And it'll stay paused, because that's where you last had it. If you want to skip up and down, or change the speed, or click anything to create an action, just look at whatever controller tooltip that you have. There are a few other things to note in here. So this is actually showing that we have the gem selected. So if you don't actually want to look up this guy, you see it right here. It also shows you where your cursor is projecting in the X and Y co coordinate. And this is pretty cool for making some really clean choreography. And it shows you the beat that you're currently authoring. So 25 is what it's showing, because I'm projecting to this beat 25, as you can see on the portal. OK, so now let's edit some stuff. Since I'm projecting into this beat, it's actually locking on to this left gem that I have right here, because I have gems selected. So once it's locked on, I can actually click the trigger, and I can start moving the gem. So you'll see, as I move it in the x, it's, it's changing the x coordinate. You can move it in the y, you can move it all around, wherever. And just let go of the trigger, boom. There it is. OK, what next? So now we're going through the game. We're playing. And I want to 
going to change some stuff. So I pause it again. I'm going to bring the menu up. And I'm going to make all of the gems dir gems. Let's do that. So I'm going to select a dir gem on both sides. Resume. I'm going to skip back to the beginning. OK, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to unpause this and hold down the triggers. And as it goes through each beat, it's actually going to just place the dir gems wherever my hands are. You can either do this or you can pause each place that you want to and just click the tri trigger. So right now I'm right in front of this beat 19 and it's projecting you know, to the next whole beat. Click the trigger. There it is. I don't have to actually wait you know, for the game to play to put it down. Um, let's pause that again. I actually want to erase that though, so let's erase it. Click resume, go back to the beginning. There it is, I'm gonna pause it, and now click, and it's gone. Wow, and knuckles are shifty. That's why this keeps jumping around, sorry guys. Anyway, I'm bringing up menu again, and I'll toggle back to my current selection, so that's dirt gems, and click okay. All right, I'm gonna go through each of these and just change all of the right hand to dirt gems. So let's click and hold, 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 cool. I missed a few in the beginning, whatever. Okay, here we are. So now once you've placed them, you can move them around by holding the trigger and moving them. And then you want it to actually angle in some sort of direction that's fun to swipe in. So I'm going to get a little closer by clicking the joystick a couple times. There we go, okay. And see this little handle? You can click this and you can actually angle it into place. There you go. And if you move a little farther away, again, you can move them all. So that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go up to the next one and change this one. So this one I actually want to go up. That's nice, cool. So I have this little like, beat now. That's pretty fun. Okay, let's change a few more objects. I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna change all of the left side to ribbons. Oh, and notes, okay, so drums work basically the same as dirt gems. You place them, and then you're also gonna want to rotate them into place, just like I just did with the dirt gems. So, I think you can handle that on your own. I'm just gonna show you ribbons and then move on. So, with ribbons selected, Another thing to note with that is, at least what I've found, I like to do them on half beat divisions. It just ends up being the cleanest and most elegant way to do it. You can do whatever beat division you want, but I'm just gonna do half and go from there. So I'm gonna resume and let's see, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna back up a bit and hold it. And there we go. Okay, so I was holding down the trigger and just moving through at currently, was that 85%? And laying down that ribbon. So just like any other game object, you can click this and it'll lock onto it and you can move the entire ribbon or something cool with these ribbons. You can go to any spot in it and it'll click on basically that node, that next beat division, and you can just move that little piece of it. So this is really helpful for cleaning the whole ribbon and getting it just right, that perfect swoop. Okay, cool. Um, there are a few other game objects to show you. So let's do some guides. These are pretty cool. When you have this selected, all it's gonna do is toggle whether a guide is connecting two gems. It'll toggle it on or off. So I'll show you that. I have this one selected, easy peasy, click the trigger. There's the little guide. Click it off, has no guide anymore, boom. Okay, let's do some more stuff. Barriers, okay. So we created this little guide in front of you to show you where the barrier is gonna go. I'm going to start this again. Let's get here, okay. 
as you can see, if you just play, it'll show you where you're projecting, just like the cursors do. So this is essentially your cursor. So here, what do I want to do? Actually, here, let's go up to this next one. Ha. I want to make people lean on this one, sure. So you can see that this is actually following your head. The only thing that your hands do in barrier selection is actually create the barrier by pulling the trigger, but it's following your head. So IRL, I'm stepping, leaning, and ducking. So on this one, let's get people to lean. So I'm gonna put it right there, click the trigger, boom, there's a barrier, awesome. So that works, but you know what? I changed my mind, I actually just want them to step. Cool, you just go to the step position, click, there it is. And same as any game object, you can open up the console again, click erase, and erase it. That easy. All right. So now that I've shown you a few things, let's do some copying. Let's start here. Okay. So I really like this little bit, this little out and then in. I want to copy it all the way through. So I'm going to open up the menu again. I'm going to click copy. And it's going to come up with showing you where you're going to start your copy selection. So yes, that's right. Beat 32 right on that little move. I'm going to click the trigger, start. But I don't want to end it there. So I'm going to unpause, or yeah, play and then pause again to find where I want to end it. Beat 33 right here. I'm going to click the trigger. Boom, here it is. Okay, this is your copy console. This will show you what you are basically making as what we call a snippet. And it'll come up with your current selection beat numbers by default and whatever song you're in. So Dree for Drift. There are a few other things on here. The start and the end can be manually adjusted if you get a little more advanced. Um, by clicking up or down. You can see the tooltips are still on. You can exit out of this at any time. So I haven't saved any of this. So if I exit now, it just won't save. Um, you can resume to pick another part of it. So let's say I can either adjust this by going to the next half beat or I can click resume and it's actually gonna start over the process. So. Let's go, let's do this. Let's start at 33 and end at 33, but that's not right. We actually want to start at 32 and end at 33. That's how you did it. See, it's right behind me, cool. There are two options for saving these. So you can create a temporary snippet by saving temporarily, which means it's just gonna be in this session of editing, or you can make more of a long-term save to library. Um, We've also made a button for renaming this, and I would suggest that if you are to save it to library, maybe name it something that you actually kind of know, because it's a little risky to just throw down um, some random snippet that you have and see if it works, but hey, maybe that's how you choreograph, I don't know. Anyway, I am going to rename this just to show you what it is, and I'm gonna call it Gem. Dive. That makes total sense. Cool. Enter. Awesome. And I'm going to save temporarily. So it takes you back to the main menu, and there you can just resume. But I don't want to just resume. I want to paste. So I'm going to go to our paste menu. So here you have, by default, it's going to show you the short term snippets right here, temporary snippets. If you have any in your library, you click this. Right now, I don't, but that's where you'd find them. So these will only show the ones that you're making right now in this session. This can get pretty long pretty fast, so I put a little scroll bar in. And by default, it has your last selection selected, so that's the only one I have now. And you can delete these at any time if it gets just way too messy. Um, a few other things. You have the manual adjustment, just like the copy console or you can adjust where this is going to be copied. So let's say 
if you want to copy this onto the next beat and you don't actually want to go into the game to do it, you can do it right here. Let's go ahead and do that and just see what happens. Boom. It just changed it. And let's do one more just to show you. Okay. If you pause there and click the trigger and say OK, that's where you'll paste it to. So you can do either option. When you're done, just click Exit. And there you have it. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, when you're done with everything, save your work, save changes. It pops up and says My Choreo by default. You can name that whatever you want. So this is a copy of regular, but it's my take on it. So I'm going to call it Reg Schmeg. The perfect name. Enter. Okay, cool. We're done here. So I'm going to exit. And we're back. Okay, so if all that worked, you're in custom tab. If you go to the song you just went to, you should see it. There it is. I see Red Schmeg by Cooper Uber. Hey, that's me. So now I have the option to edit that. Or again, I can make any copies of the other ones, create new, or I can delete it. And if I wanted to play it, I would just click that button, launch it, and dance my little heart out. So there you have it. I think that's everything. Um, have so much fun. Really, really appreciate you trying out this tool. Again, it is in development, and we're constantly improving it, just like we are the whole game. If you haven't joined our Discord yet, please join and join all the discussions about this tool and playing the game in general, song suggestions, streaming, any new updates. We're usually on there and we're talking to people all the time. So we'd love to have you join if you haven't and have so much fun. Bye.